tribal leaders across our state calling for an all hands on deck approach as indigenous people battling addiction get trafficked from home to home. It's all part of a massive fraud, a Medicaid fraud scheme that we shed light on in a three part series preying on a people with the state suspending more than 100 providers. Fox 10 investigator Justin Lum digging into the potential fallout of displaced Native Americans. And one of those registered providers temporarily suspended by access spoke to us. The co-owner says the notice she received seemed generic and vague. Now tribal members impacted by the state's crackdown say they don't know where to go for Medicaid services. <laughs> Inside Memorial Hall at Steel Indian School Park, the spotlight shines on tribal leaders, all eyes on the search for a solution to an issue not only ripping off taxpayers, but taking lives. This is not just an Arizona Indian issue. We have our relatives, Navajo people even who are being trafficked from New Mexico, Utah, as far away as Wyoming and Montana. This is a national phenomenon. Ethel so Branch, Attorney General for Navajo Nation, sounding off. Regardless of the state or reservation, Native Americans are being brought here to the Phoenix metro area, offered services to get sober, but the FBI is investigating how being trafficked for treatment ends up a lie while fake rehab centers get paid through Access Medicaid funds. Now the state is cracking down, suspending payments from Access to nearly 150 registered providers. But Dwight Nett Mitchell says Access is only making an example of her clinic and others under suspension. We're not going to the reservation picking up people off the street. Mitchell is the co-owner of ICANN Healthcare and Services, an intensive outpatient program based in Glendale. She tells me ICANN opened last August, starting with 10 clients, growing quickly to nearly 100. We follow the rules because our first and only um, things that we worry about is the clients being safe, the clients being tr their treatment. Sobriety is the first option that we have, uh, their health, their kids' safety. Just two weeks ago, Mitchell received this notice of suspension from Access, accusing ICANN of engaging in Medicaid fraud, billing for services that could not have been provided as claimed. Even billing for excessive hours per member for services greater than 24 hours on a given date of service. Mitchell denies allegations of fraudulent billing, and now ICANN must transition patients to other providers. We had to withdraw all of our clients and send them elsewhere. But when you ask them where should we send the clients, because you have so many people that is suspended, we don't have a place to actually send them. ICANN has never been cited for deficiencies, according to the Department of Health, and patients like Kimberly Liston are impacted by the suspension. As an Navajo, it's intimidating to come out and be like, hey, I have a problem. Liston has been sober for three months and says there's a lack of resources for addiction issues on the reservation. My mom actually passed away from alcoholism, and it's not a good thing to talk about, but it makes me more aware of the generational trauma that I come from. Unlicensed facilities are still popping up, and Mitchell says the effects will be felt as providers get sidelined. Not only will the people become homeless, but then crime is going to increase. People, children are going to end up in foster care. So it's, it's going to cause chaos. A spokesperson with Access says officials can't comment further on this suspension of ICANN due to the ongoing investigation. The provider can fight the suspension through a hearing with the state. We did request an interview with Carmen Heredia, the new director of Access, regarding Medicaid fraud in general. But we're told she's not doing interviews at this time. We have seen a lot more of our relatives go missing. A lot of families reaching out to us because they are missing. Reva Stewart is an advocate for victims of fraudulent sober living and behavioral health homes. She works to help those displaced get back home. If um, they're dumped, you know, they are told to leave the facility or they get into a van, get dropped off at the Phoenix Indian Medical Center. But she admits there are rooted issues on the reservation for natives fighting to stay sober. On the Navajo Nation, they have very limited behavioral health places. 
that with this issue of our relatives being missing, going off the reservation, trying to find help, I see that they're stepping it up. I see that they're moving in the direction where we should have had behavioral health centers or rehab centers more so on the reservations. Is this an example of the lack of resources on tribal land? Absolutely. When you ask um, people from the Navajo tribe and Apache and th different things like that, if you ask them do they want to go back, they'll tell you no. Operation Rainbow Bridge, a collaboration between Navajo Nation, the state of Arizona, Phoenix Indian Medical Center, and Solari Crisis Human Services, launched to bring victims of fraudulent sober living homes back to safety. Liston says it's about time. Well, they need to be held accountable also. I'm Justin Lum for Fox 10 Investigates. You know of a victim in need of resources. The state has provided a hotline. You can dial 211 and press option 7. And if you believe there is fraudulent activity regarding a sober living home in your neighborhood, send your tips to Fox 10 Investigates by scanning the QR code on your screen, or you can email us at fox10investigates at fox.com.